hello. This talk is mainly going to be on scrolly telling. Um, my name is Jason Cow. So a little about me, I'm a freelance React developer right now working for a Canadian tech consultancy. I'm an incoming freshman at Columbia, also studying CS and statistics. So what is scrolly telling? Scrolly telling is a storytelling technique on the web where content unfolds um, as a user scrolls. Um, whenever I tell people what scrolly telling is, I always love to show them Snowfall. Um, so Snowfall is one of the New York Times' best scrolly telling pieces, um, basically as the text scrolls. The graphic also transitions to match um, the text. Cards pop up also at some point, and <coughs> it just supports the storytelling on this piece. So that's basically scrolly telling. Why should you consider using it for your next uh, storytelling interactive? Um, to answer this question, I'm going to use um, Bran Ferenc's quote: "The web is a scrolly telling is a storytelling medium." So I really dig this quote because I'm from high school. Well, I just graduated high school, and all my friends, whenever I tell them I do web development, they're always like, oh, like I hate JS, I hate CSS. Why are there three equal signs everywhere? Like, front end is so boring. But um, no, obviously, I hope, <laughs> I hope most of the people in this room um, don't think that way. I really do think that web development is beautiful, and web development can be very thoughtful. Um, so and interactive web development is not just flashy animations, obviously. On the web, we have several different types of content, like text, image, video, audio, other multimedia. And the web bring them, brings them together in a very unique medium. Scrolling is just an intuitive way to do that. So basics of scrolly telling. The sticky graphic pattern. The sticky graphic pattern is one of the most popular ways to implement scrolly telling. Basically, what happens is you're scrolling. A graphic comes up, it sticks for a duration of steps, and then when the steps conclude, the graphic scrolls back up. Sticky graphic. So, um, yeah. I think one of the best examples of this is from The Pudding. Uh, one of their most recent articles is about women in the House of Representatives. Um, so what happens is there's an intro, you scroll down, graphic sticks. Apologies for it looking bad. It, I guess it's not responsive. Um, in this article, we only focus on the House of Representatives, whatever. And as each step goes up, you see it triggers transitions in the graphic. Um, yeah, it brings you through a whole data analysis. It brings you through the story. So how do we actually implement scrolly telling in React? Um, I'm going to split this part into two um, sections. The first one is step triggers. The second one is sticky positioning. So in the olden days of like 2015, um, what everyone would do is you would add an event listener or request an animation frame and use a t loop through all of your elements, get a ton of get bounding client recs, um, and that's how you would get the information necessary for tr scroll triggers. But, um, and that, and I mean, this is JavaScript, so it all, rain, it all runs on the main thread, and if you have a ton of elements like in the pudding article I just showed, um, there's going to be, it's going to be slow, and users are going to be frustrated with either their browser or the computer uh, or just your website. So what we have now is the intersection observer. Basically, it's an API that lets you, well, it's a JavaScript API, uh, that lets you configure a callback whenever an element um, referred to as a target intersects the viewport or specified ancestor element, which people call the root. Um, and there's no need to do anything on the main thread with intersection observer. So I obviously think that things should be done by example. So let's create an intersection observer. Um, yeah, this is all you need to do. The options, let's go through each of them. So the root, as I said before, is basically the viewport. Um, it's to check the visibility of the target. So it defaults to the browser viewport, which is why we configured it as null. Um, and, but you can put any of the target's ancestor elements um, as, the, as the root. So the target is the blue rectangle. Just imagine we're scrolling up. The target's coming up from the bottom into the viewport. Um, and the threshold is the target's, um, like the percentage of its visibility in the root. So when we set it to 0 0.5, we're talking about if 50% of the target is inside the viewport, then the intersection observer will call our callback. Um, now the root margin basically just serves to grow or shrink the bounding box of the viewport before you compute intersections. So we had a negative margin of 20%. So that shrinks the box. So even though 50% of our threshold is already in the viewport, 
the intersection observer won't call the callback until it's in the yellow box. 50% of it is in the yellow box. Um, so yeah, after you have those options, you add in a callback, you dot observe a target element, and you're all good, you're all set. So next part, the second part is sticky positioning. Um, sticky positioning is basically the love child of relative and fixed. What happens is when you, you're scrolling down, you're scrolling down, and sticky elements are static, they're relatively positioned, until you get to some threshold when they become fixed. Um, and that threshold is any like um, directional declaration, such as top zero. So if you put top zero on a sticky element, then it'll be position fixed when you scroll, when you hit the top edge of its parent in the screen, or the viewport. Um, so I don't want to take you guys through um, a thorough implementation of an actual uh, like scrolly telling interface because it's just a bunch of tedious intersection observers everywhere um, that are gonna, it's gonna take about an hour. I don't wanna lead you guys through that. So I basically implemented a very simple one yesterday um, called React Scrollama based on Russell Goldenberg's Scrollama JavaScript library. Um, ton of intersection observers. I'll just show you guys what it does. So we have the graphic on the right um, and we have our steps on the left. And the trigger is at 0.33, which means I just configured a bunch of root margins to match it to that offset up on that viewport. Um, so when the steps pass the trigger, I highlighted them and I put their data into the state of the in, into the state that controls or not controls it contains um, the graphic and the steps. So that's how the graphic gets the data. Graphic will become fixed at some point and as the steps go through, it'll just work its magic. And then we scroll down, and it's on its way out because it's a sticky graphic. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, I showed you two technologies that you can use for scrolly telling, um, React Scrollama, and um, this is my contact info. My React Scrollama is also on my GitHub. Um, that's my Twitter. You can be my seventh follower. Um, <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Um, so he. Sorry, what's your name? Kurt. Uh, Kurt asked, um, <laughs> who at the New York Times actually has the time to build those huge articles. So what the New York Times does is they have two desks. So they have the interactives desk and the graphics desks. Um, the interactives desk kind of builds the tech framework that reporters can use to build tech like this. And then the graphics editors, um, they actually build the graphics. They can spend weeks at a time. Um, they're not on the same timeline as a regular reporter but they are on a tight deadline, which is why it's kind of buggy. But it's a very good article, anyways. So yeah, thank you.